Hey there, I'm Danielle Fontenot and welcome to Revival Missions. On this episode, I want to talk to you about peace. You know, people in this world are seeking peace. People are looking to find peace and comfort in this life. Things are crazy, busy, we see things going on in the news and people want to have peace. They're tired of the fear and the anxiety and they are really searching for Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is our Prince of Peace. And so when the world doesn't know Jesus, they fill themselves with things to achieve some kind of peace. And those things are so temporary. You know, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that God has put eternity in the hearts of man. People know there is more uh, than this life. E even if you study ancient, ancient history and cultures, they would believe in some form of afterlife and they are searching for God. They are searching for Jesus and just don't even know it yet. And so we see people fill themselves with things to try to just zone out, to not have to focus on the stress of life. And and, and then doing good things at times, you know, to, to bring comfort, it's good. I'm not saying that, entertainment or having fun with your family. Obviously those things are so good for us. But when the world fills themselves with things like alcohol, drugs, the addictions that are going on, the increase of drugs because they are feeling stress and anxiety, hurt. They're wounded people and they're trying to numb themselves. Some people are addicted to, it could be shopping, anything that would just get you to not think about what's going on in your life and, and just to bring you peace or, or the next high. Some people are addicted to control. They have to control every situation and everything that happens because they have to have it all figured out because they have so much fear and anxiety. And if they are in control, then, then they're going to get that peace. And we know that's not, that's not from God. That's not how life works. And so, um, and that's what the world does. And so what about believers? Believers struggle with peace, just stress, anxiety, discouragement, fear, like every day. And that's not, again, that is not God's plan for a child of God. And so, uh, God has a wonderful plan for our life. God is a good Father, He loves you. Jesus loves you so much. If you don't know that, I'm telling you right now, He loves you. And we're going to look at some scriptures. And you can go back and watch my last video on, on love but uh, and guarding your mind. It went hand in hand. But, you know, I think what we do sometimes um, to try to achieve peace and to have it all figured out is we, we have this list and we're like, okay, God, this is, this is my plan. This is what I'm going to do because I have it figured out. Right. And so, because I'm in control and I got it figured out, it's going to be good. And so this is when I'm going to retire. This is where I'm going to live. This is what I'm going to do for my career. This is who I'm going to marry. And yeah, they might not really be a believer, but you know, maybe they'll change once we get married. And, and this is where I'm going to, you know, uh, do this and that. And I have it all. This is my plan. God, this is what I'm going to do in ministry. I know you're calling me to go to the mission field and it just doesn't make sense. I'm not doing that. And that's what we do to God. I heard someone that were scared to get saved because they were concerned they got saved. God called them to missions. It's like, oh my goodness. So you think you have peace by making your own decision, but in the long run, you are not satisfied. And so we have this list and we're like, God, now you come off and you sign on my list and, uh, and, and you go ahead and bless my plans. Me, me, me. Cause I got it figured out. And God's like, nope, sweetheart, that's not how it works. This is my list. This is my will for your life. This is my plan. And you're going to sign first. And then I'm going to fill in the details. Because if you saw it ahead of time, it would be so big and wonderful. It would probably even scare you. And so you're going to sign first. And I'm going to fill in all the details of your life because you're going to trust me. And it's going to bring you peace. And that's what God wants. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, this is God. He says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. God is not bringing you into disaster and harm and car wrecks and sickness and disease and death because, you know, it's going to teach you something. No, no. We wouldn't trust Father God if he was like that. Many believers don't. They love God and they got saved, but they don't live in victory because they don't trust, truly trust him that his plans are good. He says, I'm not going to harm you. Sickness, car wrecks, uh, premature death, um, lack of finances, that hurts us. And he's saying, I'm not going to harm you. My plans are to give you hope and a future. So what he's saying is, I got amazing plans for you, child. But you have to trust me. You have to follow what I'm saying. And that's going to bring you true peace in this life. And you know what? I followed God for um, 
I've been saved for 19 years, full-time ministry 17 years. And I didn't have all the details in the plan worked out when I went on the mission field. Where was, where was I going to live? What about the money? What about bringing my kids there? What about this? I didn't have all the details filled in, but because I learned to trust him and have faith that he is good, it all worked out. And that brings me peace. So in essence, I don't have to know every detail, but I know his plans for me are powerful. They are good and they are mighty. And the same for you. If you are a born again child of God, God has amazing plans for you. You know, I'm in the process of raising children. I have a teenager and a preteen. And as a parent, and maybe you feel this way too, if you've had kids or in the process of raising kids that you think, I need to improve on my parenting skills. Do you ever feel that way? Like, I wish I'd have done this more and I wish I'd done that better. Maybe I should have been a little more forgiving in that area. Hey, that family does that and that's pretty cool. Maybe I should implement that. And so we're always evaluating ourselves and it's good. Just don't get a condemnation, but it's good to think and evaluate. Am I doing things right? But you know what, Father God? He never, ever thinks that way. He never thinks he has to improve on his love for you. He never thinks he has to improve on uh, healing for you or blessings for you or mercy for you or grace for you. He does not have to improve on his fatherhood because his love is perfect. And again, that gives me peace. He is so amazing. You know, when he created Adam and Eve, he provided everything they needed. He created the earth first and the stars, the moons, the land, the sea the oxygen, everything they needed to live because he had them in mind. And then when they were created, it was done. The world was perfect because he is, his plans are perfect. He is such a good father. And so um, John 10, 10 says, the thief, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we just write God's plans for you or to prosper you and to bless you and not to harm you. But the devil, his plans for you are to come to steal, kill, and destroy. And of course, if you keep reading John 10, 10, it says Jesus came to give life and life abundantly. That's to give you Zoe, his nature, his character. And so the devil's plans for you are not good. And so once you become a born again believer in Jesus Christ, what the devil does to keep you from walking out in victory is he comes to deceive you. The only way you can be defeated in this life is through deception and lies. He comes to character assassinate God. No, God does not always heal. Well, if it's God's will to heal. I just read about the leper and he said, are you willing? Are you willing? And Jesus said, I am. He didn't say, well, first, um, Mr. Leper, let me see if you gave in your tithes. Let me see if you're living holy. Let me see if you're good looking. No, he didn't even ask anything. He was sick. He needed something from Jesus. And he said, are you willing? I believe, I believe you want, to. I believe you're able. But are you willing? I think a lot of believers are stuck there. I believe God's able. I believe he can. But is he willing? Jesus settled it. He said, I am willing. It says he healed all who are oppressed of the devil. That includes you and me. And so God's plans are good. But the devil will character assassinate and say, no, nah, no, he don't want to prosper you. No, nah, uh-uh. In fact, go ahead and criticize the prosperity message. And go ahead and criticize pastors who are in prosperity and doing amazing things for God. Go ahead and criticize it. Go ahead and work against the church. That, that's what, you, and you're deceived and you do it and you follow it. I hope you don't, I'm just speaking in general. And that's what happens. Um, You can't really have a good marriage. Look at everyone in the church who's divorced or if you have been divorced, you're under shame and condemnation and you should not be. Uh, but your second marriage, that's not gonna work out. And your kids, come on. Look, look all the pornography. Look all the drugs. Look at this world. It's going to hell in a handbasket. You cannot, you can't raise godly children and the devil comes to steal. He comes to deceive. And so you think, well, what's the point of going to church? What's the point of living holy? What's the point of praying? What's the point of trying in life? And then that's where he got you. He has deceived you and you cannot let him to do it. And then what happens is, is believers start to prophesy over their own life. Well, you know, this, this disease is genetic and so I'll probably get it. They're just prophesying death. And, um, you know, um, I'll just always struggle in finances. Life's just always a struggle and they just keep speaking it over themselves. And there is power in your words. I don't care if you believe in powerful confession, word confession or not, there are power in your words, whether you believe it or not. And there are so many scriptures to back that up, but that's not what I'm teaching on today. And so, uh, I think I even have a teaching on one of my other videos about the words we speak or power words. You should look that up. And so the devil just comes to steal your peace. By causing all those thoughts to come, all that stress, all that worry to come. That's what he does. He is a thief. And the only way he can deceive you is if you believe his lies. You know, with Adam and Eve in the garden, he didn't come with some big elephant stomping and forcing them to eat a fruit or as a lion threatening with a roar. 
came as a little snake. They could have stomped his head because he had no power to force them to do anything or to believe anything. He came with his deception and his lies like he does, just opening that mouth. Eve, did God really say you would die? You're not going to die if you eat that fruit. And she believed the deception. From the beginning, that's what he did. And he is still the same today, lying devil. And so you just have to be aware of that, that you are healed. You are blessed. You are forgiven. God's grace is for you. You are blessed, highly favored. You are blessed going in, blessed going out. You are blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Your bread bowls and, and baskets are blessed just because you are a child of God. That is grace. That is given to you freely. You are forgiven of sins. You are holy. You are no longer a sinner if you're in Christ Jesus. The Bible says he died for you. You were a sinner. Now you're the righteousness of God. Get out of that I'm a sinner mentality because when you become so sin conscious, you're always going to live in defeat. You're always going to live depressed. You won't have peace. You're always going God's mad at you. The issue was settled. He put that wrath and sin and sickness and everything on Jesus on the cross. It is done. His grace is for you. And you're saying, well, can I just go off and sin? No, that would be stupid because there's consequences in this life. And that's an inroad to the devil. And so all that stuff, all that worry, all that fear, all the lies of the enemy are to steal your peace. But look what God says in Isaiah 26, 3. And I encourage you to take notes that you make this your revelation. I can preach to you my revelation, but make it yours so you are not susceptible to the lies of the devil. He says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. You have to train your mind to stay focused on God and his word. That's why we teach get scriptures for whatever you're believing for so your mind can stay focused on the word of God. And it, in essence, you're focused on God. But because he trusts in you, you have to trust God. You have to trust that he is loving. He is kind. He is not here to harm you, to send storms in your life. Will storms of life come? They do. I hate it. They do. God's blessing is after us. His favor is upon us. His protection is on us. But the devil tries. He's a loser. And you don't ever have to accept it. And so you have to truly believe he's good to stay in perfect peace. Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on, on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct, or he shall direct your paths or make your paths straight. And so you have to trust that he loves you. He is a good father. And so um, there's a testimony of Barry Benedict. He's on staff at Karis Bible College in Colorado, and he was diagnosed with two stage four cancers at the same time and given up to die. The doctor said, get you. And now he knew divine healing. He had received healing for other things. And the doctor says, Mr. Bennett, get your affairs in order. You're going to die. You should have listened to his testimony. Look up Barry Bennett healing testimony. And it threw him for a loop because he's like, I believe in healing. Anyway, he quieted himself. If he would have gotten fear, doubt, and unbelief, he would have never heard the Holy Spirit because he quieted himself and he trusted in God's goodness. The Holy Spirit whispered, you will not die from this. And there was a battle and there were symptoms. And But anyway, that was in 2020. He is alive and healed and whole today. He says, I feel better than I ever did, but he had to trust that God wanted him well, that it wasn't a, well, I want to wonder if, if he wants me well. You would die believing that. And he held on to that. He held on to the scriptures and he is healed today. So all that is just, the devil just wants to throw discouragement, steal your peace, to just distract you from the word of God, to distract you from a true worship, loving, meaningful, meaningful relationship with the father. Colossians 3.15 says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. You have to let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. It's your decision. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And this is the key. It says, and be thankful. Be thankful. You can thank and praise your way through a storm. When I miscarried twins in 2010, I'm trying to remember the date, 2010, November 2010, I was halfway into the pregnancy. And I had to go in and be induced into labor and deliver them. And when I came out of that, um, I was, first of all, not happy I miscarried twins, but I knew they were in heaven. And I just thanked my way through that season. I thank God for Jeremy, my husband. I thank God for my son that I got to experience motherhood at least one time. Uh, some people never had kids, and I was thankful for that. And then later on, God did bless me with my little princess, Vivian. She's a huge blessing to us. I thanked God for my salvation. I thanked my way through that storm, and it brought me peace. Did the devil come with thoughts and try to bully me? Yes, he did. But I thanked my way. I kept my mind off of the enemy and his lies and his deception. And I focused him on God. I had to do it. It took effort on my part. God's not going to do it for you. Everything is up to us. Will we cooperate with him? Galatians 5, to 23 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, 
kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So when you were born again, a fruit of the Holy Spirit in you is peace. You can command peace to come forth and bubble up in you and joy and faith. You have self-control. I can't control my eating. I can't control anger. Yes, you can. It's a fruit of the Spirit. The devil just deceived you in that area. You can. It's a fruit. God would not lie. God would not lie. Believe the Word of God no matter what. Believe the Word of God. You activate it by speaking it and putting it into practice. Putting it into practice. And God's Word always works. 2 Corinthians 10 uh, verse 5, and this will help you to have peace. Cast down imaginations and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Don't let your mind go everywhere and worry and like bring those thoughts in. The doctor said this, just like with Barry Bennett or Dodie Osteen. I've shared her testimony so many times, but they went back to what does the word of God say? And it wasn't instant healings. It wasn't an instant miracle. They had to stand the word for quite a while, but they saw that healing manifest and both are alive today. So praise God. You've got to control your thoughts. Cast down when, the, when you're having, like Barry Bennett said, when he got the cancer diagnosis, he didn't plan a funeral. They, they told him he would die. He didn't plan a funeral. He said, I started planning vacations. I saw myself well. The power of your imagination. You can't confess healing scriptures or blessings or whatever and then just keep imagining and thinking on the bad. And so he said, I planned vacations. I saw myself well and there will be a day I'm going to go on this vacation. He's always ordering stuff for it. How amazing is that? And he is healed today. That was four years ago. He got the diagnosis. I want you to listen to this. Jeremiah 9, 22 to 24. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me. God wants you to know him. Spend time in worship, prayer, and reading the word. He says that I am the Lord exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. Now this is an amazing scripture because it says, listen to this, for in these a delight, says the Lord. So basically he is saying, I delight in my love for you. I mean, meditate on that. He really does love you. He is for you and not against you. Joshua 1, 9. I'm just giving you a lot of scriptures to, for you to go and meditate on and think on, and it will help you to have peace. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Don't be in fear. Don't be in worry. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You know, he's saying don't be worried. Don't be fearful. Because when you're in worry, fear, doubt, discouragement, that's the devil's playground. Your faith flow will not work. So healing is already yours to get to manifest in the natural or blessings, prosperity, victory in any area, really. If you are constantly in the negative and thinking on those things, then it hinders that faith from flowing and bringing it to manifestation. You have to stay in the faith arena. That's why it's important to have scriptures for what you're believing for when a symptom comes, when the bank account's not looking good, uh, when your children are acting up. You need those scriptures. Father, your word says this. I stand on your word. It might not look like it yet, but I stand on your, on your words. I choose to have peace. I choose to trust you and I choose to love you. And I'm praising you through all this. I'm going to be thankful. You got to do that. That's effort on your part. God is commanding us. He's not going to do it for us. He's not going to resist the devil for you. You have to do it. You have to resist the sickness. You have to resist lack. You have to resist worry. You have to resist anger. You have to resist all those things. And he gives you the tools. It's in his word. Speak the word. Think on the word. Act on the word. And it will bring you peace in this life. And this is the last verse I have for you. I'm going to pray over you. Number 6, 24 to 26. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. He gives us, Jesus said he gives us his peace. Not as the world gives. When the world gives, they want something back. Jesus freely really gives his peace to us. So I pray over you that this year will be a year of peace, prosperity, blessings, and divine health, that there's a boldness and a courage in you to stand on the word of God, to be thankful, to rejoice, that your love walk with the Father increases this year. And then what it does is in, in turn, it just builds your capacity to love others and to fulfill everything God has for you. So I pray that blessing over you in Jesus name. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you have a great day. Stay tuned for more. God bless. Hey there, I want to personally invite you to prayerfully consider partnering with this ministry. 
If these teachings have been a blessing to you and stirred you up, then I want to encourage you to jump on board and become a weekly or monthly supporter. To support Revival Missions, simply go to our website at jeremyfontenot.com. The link will be posted in the description, and there you'll find several ways to give. You can give via PayPal, via tithe.ly, or you can send an old-fashioned check in the mail. And uh, I want to say thank you in advance for partnering with us to see the advancement of the gospel of the kingdom of God.